Caleb Kostereke, and this is Proven Progression. The bow tie is becoming a really popular move in the backcountry. Lots of guys want to learn it, lots of guys are doing it, um, and I'm teaching them a lot in my advanced clinics. I figured it was time to go through it in a video and kind of go step by step how to do it, uh, where to practice it. So like almost any backcountry move, it all starts with your approach. I have a nice clean approach line coming up this hill at a fairly decent angle. That's gonna make it so I don't have to bring the bow tie around as far and that'll make it easier to learn. I come in with some controlled momentum. You know, I have speed, but I'm not getting tossed around. I'm not getting bucked around. And that allows me to spot where I'm gonna do my bow tie and really focus on what I'm doing to initiate that bow tie uh, because my in run's clean. So when you're coming in to do a bow tie, you want to be wrong foot forward and you want your foot about three quarters of the way back on the running board. You want your finger on the brake and you want a pretty aggressive uh, forward stance on the sled that allows you to soak everything up with your elbows bent. So you've spotted where you want to do your bow tie. In my case, that's right here. I spot that, I come in right here, I turn the bars into the hill a little bit and that's going to let the sled carve around the corner. And as I'm carving around the corner, I'm also increasing throttle and that's going to help bring the front end up. As I come in around the corner, the front end's coming up and I continue to look around and that's going to help the sled just pivot around because the sled follows where you look. When I turn my head to the left, my whole body follows. And that's how you initiate the bow tie and you get the sled to follow you around this corner. So after carving the corner and getting the front end to stall up in the air, you're going to have to let off the throttle Otherwise, you'll just loop around or loop out and lose control. So as you can see, I'm letting off the throttle around this corner and just kind of letting gravity and the sled do the work and follow around. At this point, it's all about gravity and letting the track just kind of idle or spin a little bit, but not spin out of control. Let it kind of chew its way down and let gravity pull the sled down back onto edge. When I'm here, I'm almost in a stalled out feeling and I'm just spotting where I want to go and I'm planning ahead for where I'm going to take the sled. You're almost at the mercy of gravity at this point and you're just letting the sled fall down onto its panel so you can ride out. One helpful thing when you're in that uh, falling state and the front end's coming back down can be to move your foot forward into the footwell and that's going to get your weight forward and make it a lot easier to ride out and less likely to stuff your front end in. You almost always have more control when your weight's over the handlebars and forward rather than back seat. So I completed the bow tie. As soon as possible, I'm gonna get my weight forward and get re-situated on the sled to like a normal wrong foot forward riding stance. And I'm gonna be uh, looking for my line out of here, spotting it and making a plan for where I'm gonna go after I land. Because I just gained all this momentum from kind of falling downhill and completing the bow tie. Now I wanna carry that momentum forward and be able to get resituated on my sled without hesitating and without losing momentum. Some of the common mistakes with bow ties are guys come into it and they get scared right as they carve that corner. So their sled goes up vertical, skis up towards the trees, and then they bail and the sled comes straight back on top of them. That's one of the biggest mistakes you can make during a bow tie and it's one of the highest consequence mistakes. The easiest way to avoid that is to just carry a little more momentum around this corner and to really commit to looking and turning and making the sled follow around. Another common mistake is carving the corner too much and you end up doing like a donut in the middle of the hill. So the solution to that is to move your weight back a little bit and come in with a little less speed so you get more ski lift. And you almost wanna think about it as carve, point your skis towards the trees and then throw your weight downhill and throw the sled downhill to bring it around. Bow ties are a lot of fun and they can help take your riding to the next level. Even though you don't normally do a bow tie on your way to the top of the mountain, the skills you learn while doing a bow tie helps take your riding to another level because um, it gives you control and confidence of how to maneuver the sled once you get into a wheelie position. Another advantage of knowing how to bow tie is it's a great alternative to a hop over. So if I go to do a hop over 
and I'm not fast enough over the seat, I can just decide to do a bow tie and get the sled back on edge and control it instantly rather than getting bucked downhill and into the trees. So bow ties are a very good maneuver to learn. Um, I highly recommend a lot of practice and if you have any questions, you can send me your clips on Instagram and I'll take a look at them and uh, give you some tips and you can always sign up for a clinic and come learn them from me in person. Oh, oh, oh.